ഓക്കെ ഇനി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് നമാം വിശുഭതായ കൃഷ്ണ പ്രസ്താവ ഭൂത്തിലെ ശ്രീമതി ഭക്തി വേദാന്ത സ്വാമി നിത്യനാമനെ നമസ്തെ സാശ്വത ദൈവ ഗൗരവാനിപ്പിച്ചാരണി നിരുശേഷോന്യവാദി പാശ്ചാത്യ ദേശാരണി ജയ ശ്രീ കൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യ പ്രഭു നിത്യാനന്ദ ശ്രീ അദ്വൈത ദാദര ശ്രീ വസാദി ഗൗര ഭക്ത വൃന്ദ ഹരി കൃഷ്ണ ഹരി കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരി 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 റാം ഹരി റാം 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 ഹരി ഹരി ഓക്കെ So we're reading from Krishna book, uh, chapter number 29. We read a portion of the chapter. Uh, the chapter title is The Rasa Dance Introduction. So we heard how um, the first portion of the chapter was talking about how Krishna is the supreme enjoyer and um, gopis are few devotees of Krishna. And uh, Krishna is transcendental. then yeah Th- those are the main points we heard now we'll go to the next section anybody would like to read uh, the section by any chance otherwise i can read also yeah prabhuji i can read um, sorry flipping through the uh, krishna book uh, you said chapter 29 right yeah chapter 29 page number 2 224 in my book i don't know if you have same book or not yeah. uh you said page 224 yeah okay um yeah mine is 237 god <laughs> you for the paragraph besides that there's a paragraph called besides that after the chapter starts you do flip to three to the pages or something no paragraph starts besides that in the bhagavad gita krishna is called rishikesha like that it starts okay hold on in my book is four pages past four pages past not in your okay. book okay what's the one before that prabhu ji uh, sukadev so goswami then reminded parishit maharaj let me know what paragraph you see then i can tell you relative position also okay what is the starting of one of the paragraphs you see i see um, the gopis association with krishna ah, okay uh-huh. so go past that uh-huh. not the next one so go past three more paragraphs i got it fourth paragraph i got it okay. yeah so in my book is page 244 okay got it prabhu ji i'm sorry but i don't know which prayers we have to do for the krishna book no i already did the prayers we just prayed prayed proper Mm-hmm. then we pray patasa mantra and hari krishna mahan that all is great you can just start from here okay so ji um hari krishna devotee then the rest of them beside that in the bhagavad gita krishna is called uh hari kesha rishi kesha uh, oh hashi rishi kesha uh-huh. Suk- sukadeva goswami also said that krishna is rishi kesha the supreme soul whereas an ordinary man is a conditioned soul covered by the material body krishna and krishna's body are the same because he is rishikesha any person making a distinction between krishna and krishna's body is a fool number one <laughs> krishna is rishikesha and adokesha adokesha these two particular words have been used by uh, parikshit maharaj in the instance rishikesha is a super soul and adokesha is a supreme personality of godhead transcendental to the material nature just to show favor to the ordinary living entities out of his causeless mercy he appears as he is unfortunately fool foolish person make uh, mistakes him to be another ordinary person and so they become eligible to go to hell sukadeva goswami reconfirms that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead imperishable immeasurable Im- immeasurable and free from all material contamination shukadeva goswami continued to inform maharaj parikshit that krishna is not an ordinary person he is the supreme personality of godhead full of all spiritual qualities he appears in this material world out of his causeless mercy and whenever 
he appears, he appears as he is without change. This is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. There are, um, there, there the Lord says that he appears in his spiritual potency. He does, does not appear under the control of the material potency. The material potency is under his control. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that the material potency is working under his superintendence. His superintendence. It is also confirmed in the Brahma Samhita that material potency known as Durga is acting just as a shadow which moves with the movement of the substance. The conclusion is that if one sh somehow or other becomes attached to Krishna or attached to him, either because of his beauty, quality, opulence, frame, fame, strength, renunciation, or knowledge, or even through lust, anger, or fear, or affection, or friendship, then one's salvation and freedom from material contamination are assured. In the Bhagavad Gita 18th chapter, the Lord also states that one who is engaged in preaching Krishna consciousness is very dear to him. A preacher has to face many difficulties in, in his struggle to preach pure Krishna consciousness. Sometimes he has to suffer bodily injury and sometimes he has to meet death also. All this is taken as a great austerity on behalf of Krishna. Krishna therefore has said that such a preacher is very, very dear to him. If Krishna uh, enemies can expect salvation simply by con contacting their mind on him, when, uh, then what to speak of person who are so dear to Krishna? The conclusion should be that the salvation of those who are engaged in preaching Krishna consciousness in the world, um, in this, in the world is guaranteed in all circumstances. But such preachers never care for salvation because factually, one who is engaged in Krishna conscious, consciousness, devotional service has already achieved salvation. Sukadeva Goswami therefore assured King Parikshit that he should always rest assured that one attach, attached by Krishna attains liberation from material bondage because Krishna is transcendental master of the mystic power. When all the gopis assembled as described before Krishna, he began to speak to them, welcoming them as well as uh, discouraging them by worldly juggleries. Krishna is the supreme speaker. He is the speaker of Bhagavad Gita. He can speak on a higher elevated subject of philosophy, political, politics, economics, everything. And he also spoke before the gopis who were so dear to him. He wanted to enchant them by the word juggly. And thus he began to speak as follow, as follows. O oh, ladies of Vrindavan, Krishna said, you are very fortunate and you are very dear to me. I am very pleased that you have come here and I hope everything is well in Vrindavan. Now please order me. What can I do for you? What is the purpose of coming? Coming here in this dead of night, kindly take your seat and let me know. What can I do, do for you? Shall I continue, Prabhuji? I'm at, um, it says okay, the gopis had come to Krishna to enjoy his company. Yeah, please continue, Mati. Okay. <laughs> the gopis had come to Krishna to enjoy his company, to dance with him, embrace him, and kiss him. And when Krishna began to receive them very officially, showing all kind of etiquette, they were surprised. He was treating them as an ordinary society goes. Therefore, they began to smile among themselves. And um, they very eagerly listened to Krishna talk, talk in that way. When he saw that they were smiling at him, he said, my dear friends, you must know now that it is the dead of night and the forest is very dangerous. 
At times, all of the furious jungle animals, the tigers, the bears, the jackals, and wolves are prowling in the forest. Therefore, it is very dangerous for you. You cannot se select a secure place now. Everywhere you go, you will find that all these animals are loitering to find their prey. I think, therefore, that you are taking a great risk in coming here in dead of night. Please turn back immediately without delay. When he saw that the continued, they continued to smile, he said, I am very pleased your bodily feature. Um, I'm, I am very appreciated of your bodily features. All of you have very, very nice thin waist. <laughs> All of the gopis were extinguishedly beautiful. They are described in the word samdrima, samdrima. The standard of the beauty of a woman is said to be samdrima when the middle portion of the body is slender. Krishna wanted to impress on them that they were not old enough to take care of themselves. Actually, they required protection. It was not very wise for them to come in the dead of night to Krishna. Krishna also indicated that he was young and that they were young girls. It does not look very well for a young girl and a boy to remain together in dead of night. After hearing this advice, the gopis did not seem very happy. Therefore, Krishna began to stress the point in a different way. My dear friends, I can understand that you have left your homes without permission of your guardians. Therefore, I think your mothers and your fathers, your elder bro brothers, and even sons, and what to speak of your husband, must be very anxious to find you. As long as you are here, they must be searching in different places and their mind must be very agitated. So don't tray. Please go back and make them peaceful. When the gopis appeared to be a little different, um, to, to be a little di bit disturbed, the angry fo form or, and the free advice of Krishna, they diverted their attention to looking at the beauty of the forest. At that time, the whole forest was eliminating by the bright uh, shining of the moon, and the air was blowing very silently over the blooming flowers, and the green leaves of the trees were moving in the breeze. Krishna took the opportunity of their looking at the forest to advise them, I think you have come out to see the beautiful Vrindavan forest on this night. He said, but you must now be satisfied. So return to your homes without delay. I understand that you are very chaste women. So now that you have seen a beautiful atmosphere of the Vrindavan forest, please return home and engage in faithful services to your respective husbands. Some of you must have babies by, that by this time, although you are very young. You must have left your small babies at home and they must be crying. Please immediately. Go back home and just feed them with your breast milk. I can also understand that you have very great affection for me. And out of that transcendental affection, you have come here, hearing my playing on the flute. Your feeling of love and affection for me are very appropriate because I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All living creatures are my parts and parcel and naturally they are affectionate to me. So this affection for me is very much welcome and I congratulate you for this. Now you can go back to home. Although, um, sorry, another thing I must explain to you is that for a chaste woman, service to the husband without duplicity is the best religious principle. A woman should be not only faithful and chaste to the husband, but affectionate towards friends of her husband, um, obedient to the father and the mother of the husband and affectionate to the younger brothers of the husband. And most importantly, the woman must take care of the children. Yeah, you want to pause, Matthias? Sure, I can pause for a Okay, sure. Then we can discuss and we can go. So, 
where in the chapter 29, the Rasa Dan's introduction is the title of the chapter, where uh, in this first paragraph, Krishna is described uh, as Hrishikesh and also is described as Adokshada. That is the word Adokshada. So uh, we generally we hear from Bhagavad Gita, Hrishikesh means one is a master of senses like that. Adokshada means one is beyond the senses like that, one who, whom we cannot approach with our senses like that. So here also the point is made that Krishna is transcendental to the material nature. That is, is beyond the material nature like that. Foolish people think he is like an ordinary man. But the, uh, Krishna um, appears by his own spiritual potency. He does not come under the influence of material potency or Mahamaya or modes of material nature like goodness, passion, ignorance like that. He is beyond those modes. Why? Because the modes are under his control. So they cannot cover him, they are not influence him, they cannot affect him like that. Um, yeah. So now, other point made in the paragraph is that if we somehow or be other, we become attached to Krishna, attracted to Krishna, uh, because of either his qualities of beauty, opulence, fame, strength, renunciation, or knowledge like that, or through affection or friendship, or even through lust, anger, or fear, then uh, our salvation and freedom from material contamination are assured, is describing Prabhupada. In the next paragraph, um, yeah, yeah, Prabhupada is talking about preaching Krishna consciousness. How that is very good. Uh, when we preach Krishna consciousness, that makes us very dear to Krishna, like that is saying. One second, let me switch to the headset. So, yeah, you can hear me okay. Yeah. Now, okay, can you hear me with the headset also? Let me see. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. So hopefully you can hear me now. Can you hear me? One of you can confirm. As with the Mati, yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay, let's go back. Then, basically he's saying, preacher of Krishna consciousness is very dear to Krishna. So sometimes they have to endure bodily injuries. Sometimes they have to meet death also. Sometimes they have to take up greater austerity on behalf of Krishna also. Like that. Mm. So, if Krishna's enemies themselves can get salvation, liberation, by concentrating their minds on him, then what to speak of people who are preachers, who are very dear to Krishna? Like that, uh, Prabhupada is describing. And so, but they don't, but the such preachers, they don't care for liberation. They don't care for uh, salvation. Because, um, when they're engaged in Krishna consciousness, uh, devotion service, they have already achieved salvation like that. That is the point being made. Then, the after explaining uh, the transcendental nature of Krishna, the merciful nature of Krishna, how it is beneficial to have some kind of attraction to Krishna like that, now it is going switching to the next topic, which is what did how did Krishna receive the gopis when they came in the middle of the night? Uh, what did he speak to them like that? Basically, he began to speak to them. He welcomed them also. And also, uh, he disgraced them also by word juggler it is described. Basically, he was trying to enchant them, it seems, by his word juggler. So, what is he saying? Oh, ladies of Vrindavana, you are very fortunate. You are all very dear to me. I am very pleased that you came. And I hope everything is well in Vrindavana like that. So, basically, first he welcomed them and express his happiness on seeing them and upon their coming like that first. Then he says, what can I do for you? What is the purpose of your coming here in the middle of the night? Can you take your seats and let me know what I can do for you? So he's asking nicely, started nicely. Then, but gopis became surprised when they saw that Krishna is speaking so officially, formally like this. Uh, like talking to any other general woman like that. So they eagerly listened to him, 
listen to Krishna, but they were very surprised, it seems. So Krishna began to start to tell them, Oh, my dear friends, you must know it's the dead of the night. It's very dangerous for you because so many wild animals are loitering here and there. You're taking great risk in coming here. Please turn back immediately without delay. So if you notice, there are several times Krishna says, please go back, please go back, please go back like that. First he's telling them, in the middle of night is not safe. Wild animals are there like that. Then he says, I very much appreciate uh, your beauty like that. And then he says, uh, yeah, then Krishna wants to tell them that actually they need protection from others. Like women always need protection. In Vedic culture, we hear how women need to be protected by father in the childhood and then later by husband. And later stages, uh, when a husband takes one of the then a son needs to protect the mother like that. So he is describing that they are not old enough to take care of themselves like that. So he says, now he talks about from society perspective, why it's not good for them to come. He says, it does not look very well for young girl, girls and boys to remain together in the dead of the night. Gopis didn't be, see, ha, become happy by hearing that comment. So then he also says, I can understand that you left your homes without the permission of your guardians, uh, like fathers, mothers, elder brothers, and even your sons like that. So they all must be very anxious to find you. So you go back and make them peaceful like that. First argument he gave us that how their wild animals in the forest is dangerous for them. Second argument he gave us uh, how you know, it's not good for boys and girls to stay together in the dead of the night. Third argument now he's telling is how your guardians will be looking for you, searching for you. Go home like that. Now he continues on that same line. He says, now then what happened? Gopis, after hearing all these arguments and Krishna is said, saying, go home, go home like that. Now he's trying to see uh, what is he saying? Gopis are actually a little bit disturbed, it seems, and angry. So because they're a little bit disturbed and angry, so what do you do? Gopis, what did they do? They divert their attention to look at the beauty of the forest, it seems. Instead of looking at Krishna face to face, they're looking at the beauty of the forest at that time. So then when, when they're looking at beauty of the forest, instead of looking at Krishna, Krishna took that opportunity to tell, tell them, oh, you must have come to see the beautiful forest of Vrindavan. Now that you saw the beautiful forest, you can go home. So he changed the uh, discussion like that, in, the, in that way. So now you must be satisfied now having seen that beautiful forest. Now you should go uh, home uh, in, soon without delay. And you're all very chaste women. Uh, so go back and faithfully serve your husbands. Some of you already have also have babies. So go home and serve your babies nicely. Uh, feed them with milk. Um, I, I also understand that you have great affection for me. And out of affection, you came here hearing my playing on flute. Uh, and notice, he compares their love to generally all living creatures, as if like they're not special. He says, your feelings of love and affection for me are very appropriate because I'm the Supreme Lord. And uh, all living creatures are part and parcel of me and naturally they're affectionate to me. Actually, gopis are the topmost devotees of Krishna. That's why they're showing so much affection. But Krishna is generalizing them like any ordinary people like that. Then he says, uh, go back to home. Uh, being a chaste woman, serving husband is the best religious principle. Uh, not only you should be faithful to your husband, but also you should be faithful to husband's relatives. Husband's mother, husband's father, uh, husband's friends. Like that, he's saying you should be faithful to everyone. And also, women must take care of her children nicely. Like that, Krishna is telling them to go home, basically. Until that we read, we'll continue from the next paragraph. I don't know if any of you are ready, uh, are available to read from next paragraph. Uh, where is the next paragraph? In this way, right? In this way. Yeah, from this paragraph. If any of you are available, you can read. Otherwise, I can read from here. Okay, I can read. In this way, 
Krishna explained the duty of a woman. He also stressed the point of serving the husband. Even if he is not of a very good character, or even if he is not very rich, or fortunate, even if he is old or invalid on account of continued diseases, whatever her husband's condition, a woman should not divorce her husband if she actually desires to be elevated to the higher planetary systems after leaving this body. So, yeah. Besides that, it's considered abominable in society if a woman is unfaithful and goes after, goes searching for another man. Such habits will deter a woman from being elevated to the heavenly planets and the results of such habits are very degrading. A married woman should not search for a paramour for this is not sanctioned by the Vedic principles of life. If you think that you are very much attached to me and you want my association, I advise you not to personally try to enjoy me. It is better for you to go home, simply talk about me and think about me. And by this process of constantly remembering me and chanting my names, you will surely be elevated to the spiritual platform. There is no need to stand near me. Please go back home. So this is a nice paragraph. We will discuss it by paragraph by paragraph. So what we are hearing is, Krishna is saying that he um, is stressing the point about the duty of serving the husband. What is he saying? That irrespective of the husband's condition, whether it's a good character or not, whether it's rich or not, is fortunate or not, if he's old or young or is invalid or active with all the senses, doesn't matter. Or whether it's staying in the bed always because of diseases, doesn't matter. Wife needs to serve her husband in all circumstances like that is telling. And that is the way to progress to uh, higher planets, uh, spiritual world like that. is. is not, he's not taking a spiritual world. He's talking about at least heavenly planets in this context. So that is how he is encouraging the duty of a wife to the husband like that. So normally, we only hear these things in a uh, Mahabharata like that scripture. But even in Bhagavatam, Krishna personally is telling these principles. How a wife should serve a husband like that. Then he is also saying, a married woman should not search for paramour. Because that is not sanctioned in the basic principles of life. And then, then he says, so that means, now, it is not appropriate for you to stay in my association personally here now. So, you should go back home. So, this is the portion I like. Uh, this verse also and the same thing is described in the paragraph. It says, it is better for you to go home because you already married. And then, simply talk about me, think about me and by this constant remembering me and chanting my names, you will surely be elevated to the spiritual platform. There is no need to stand near me. Please go back home. The reason I like this is basically Krishna is telling us the greatness of devotion service. Even if you are not personally associated with Krishna, just by chanting the holy name of Krishna, just by talking about Krishna, just by remembering Krishna, we will get spiritual perfection. That's what he's talking about. We will get a spiritual platform. So, and the that is a path to uh, spiritual perfection, basically. So, that is the beauty Krishna explains. If you remember, similar instructions he gave in the context of Brahmana's wives who came with prasadam for food for Krishna at Balram in the middle of the forest. Even though their husbands didn't allow them, they still came. At that time also, he says, uh, even if you somebody is staying at home and thinking about me, then they'll still get a perfection like that. So the other important point is underscores is devotion service is not bound by the material conditions we are in. That means if physically we are not able to go to temple one day, uh, then we can still perform the devotion service at home. If, for example, our husband, wife, father, mother-in-law, somebody doesn't allow us to do devotion service, we can still practice devotion service by remembering Krishna. So that means there is no bar to do devotion service like that. That is the other thing we can learn from here also. And it is equally potent. That is the other point. Now going to the next paragraph. 
the instruction given here in by the supreme person of godhead to the gopis was not at all sarcastic such instruction should be taken very seriously by all honest women the chastity of women is specifically stressed in here in by the supreme person of godhead therefore this principle should be followed by any serious woman who wants to be elevated to a higher status of life krishna is the center of all affection for all living creatures when this devel- affection is developed for krishna one surpasses and transcends all vedic injunctions this was possible for the gopis because they saw krishna face to face this is not possible for any woman in the condition state unfortunately sometimes a rascal following the philosophy of monism or oneness very responsibly takes advantage of this rasalila to imitate the behavior of krishna with the gopis and tests many innocent women and mislead them in the name of spiritual realization as a warning lord krishna has here in hinted that what was possible for the gopis is not possible for ordinary women all the women can although a woman can actually be elevated by advanced krishna consciousness she should not be enticed by an imposter who says that he is krishna she should concentrate her devotional activities in chanting about krishna and meditate upon him as is advised here in one should not the follow the men called sahajiyas the so called devotees who take everything very lightly so in this paragraph they propose stressing uh, three things one is that um, the points propose told about how the wife should be faith- faithful and chaste towards her husband that propose is emphasizing that that should be taken seriously by honest women like that number one point and their point propose is sharing in this purport is that how uh, when we develop when the affection for krishna has developed so much like the gopis in this case they surpassed and transcended all the vedic injunctions that means the normal morality rules don't apply to them anymore that's also the other point prabhu is striking about the third point is saying is some people uh, take this krishna lila cheaply and say oh krishna did the ras lila so i am also krishna i am also following krishna so i should also do ras lila so like that they imitate it seems that imitation people should not women should be careful in not falling for such imitation they say prabhu is saying such people are called sahajiyas that means they make the emotions cheap transcendental emotions cheap like that and then uh, so the lesson is instead of following such sahajiya men better for a woman to chant about krishna and meditate upon krishna like that because krishna is telling that that will also help them to get to spiritual platform like that that is the essence of this paragraph let's go to next one when krishna spoke in such a discouraging way to the gopis they became very sad for they thought that their desire to enjoy the rasa dance with krishna would be frustrated so let me thus they became full of anxiety out of great sadness the gopis began to breathe very heavily instead of looking at krishna face to face they bowed their heads and looked at the ground and then they began to draw various types of various types of curved lines on the ground with their toes they were shedding heavy tears and their cosmetic decorations were being washed from their faces the water from their eyes mixed with the kumkuma on their breasts and fell to the ground they could not say anything to krishna but simply stood there silently by their silence they expressed that their hearts were grievously wounded so we are hearing the gopis response to uh, krishna's words like this where is giving him moral instruction asking them to go away in the middle of the night uh, like that right so gopis became discouraged it seems and became very sad and also they became full of anxiety maybe krishna will not accept us for our dance like that they are thinking 
So what did they do? It's a nice lesson. They, instead of speaking back, instead of arguing, instead of debating, uh, instead of scolding, instead of cursing, they just silently stood there, bowing their heads, looking at the ground. So, but through that silence, they communicated. What did they communicate? Uh, that their hearts were greatly wounded. That they communicated to Krishna. So sometimes, more than big, big words, more than scolding, more than shouting at others, silence can uh, convey a lot. So when we remember that, we can use silence as a weapon in some interpersonal relations also sometimes. When some, for example, when somebody is uh, going on blasting us left and right, left and right, they're not in a mood to listen to anything we're going to say. So better to remain silent at that time. There may be opportunity to discuss with them later on. But if you remain silent, they will realize, oh my God, I'm shouting so much, this guy is not responding. So maybe, maybe I should I should pause. I'm doing too much maybe. Like that, they will understand. So, silence can also communicate so much like that. Especially, uh, this is very much applicable with superiors. For example, our parents, our spiritual master, in case uh, they you know, raise their voice or they correct us, we should not feel the urge to defend us, urge to argue back, urge to debate with them like that. That's another principle. That's a tolerance principle for devotees. Now going to the next paragraph. The gopis were not ordinary women. In a sense, they were on an equal level with Krishna. They are his eternal associates. As it is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita, they are expansions of the pleasure potency of Krishna. And as his potency, they are non-different from him. Although they were, although they were depressed by the words of Krishna, one second, I will underline something. Although they are depressed by the words of Krishna, they did not like to use harsh words against him. Yet they wanted to rebuke Krishna for his unkind words and therefore they began to speak in faltering voices. They did not like to use harsh words against Krishna because he was their dearmost, their heart and soul. The gopis had only Krishna within their hearts. They were completely surrendered and dedicated souls. Naturally, when they heard such unkind words, they tried to reply. But in the attempt, torrents of tears fell from their eyes. Finally, they managed to speak. So in this verse, what we are hearing is mm, the exalted nature of gopis, how they are eternal associates of Krishna, how they are the expansions of pleasure potency of Krishna, that means the expansions of Srimati Radharani. Um, so, and they had so much love for Krishna, they did not want to use the harsh words. They don't want to hurt Krishna even with words also. So that's how they uh, remained silent for some time. Again, uh, and they were they were getting a lot of tears hearing that unkind words from Krishna, it seems. So they started to speak. What did they see is interesting, we'll see. In the next paragraph, he says, they say, Gopis are saying, Krishna, they said, you're very cruel. You should not talk like that. We are full-fledged surrendered souls. Please accept us and don't talk in that cruel way. Of course, you are the Supreme Person of Godhead and do what can do whatever you like. But it is not worthy of your position to treat us in such a cruel way. We have come to you leaving everything behind just to take shelter of your lotus feet. We know that you are completely independent, cannot can do and can do whatever you like. But we request you, don't reject us. We are your devotees. You should accept as Lord Narayana accepts his devotees. There are many devotees of Lord Narayana who worship him for salvation and he awards them salvation. Similarly, how can you reject us when you have now shelter? other than your lotus feet, when we have no shelter other than your lotus feet. So in this paragraph, basically they're saying that you cannot be cruel to us. We are your duties. We took shelter of you. And even, even Lord Narayana gives protection to people who take shelter of him. He gives them salvation. 
so similarly uh, you also should give shelter at your lotus feet because we gave up everything and came to your lotus feet so like that they are pleading him not to reject like that but interestingly they are also acknowledging the fact that krishna is completely independent that means even though they want krishna to do something they cannot demand krishna to do that because it's krishna is supremely independent he is the supreme person of godhead so he can do whatever he wants so that also they are acknowledging so as a devotee also when we pray into krishna that's why we pray if you so desire please help me with this if you so desire please help me like that like that we pray to krishna so similarly that that indication if you so desire why you are saying that means krishna is independent krishna doesn't have to listen to my prayer doesn't have to reciprocate to my prayer in the way i want to, especially so that's another thing we can learn from here so we're going to the next paragraph oh dear krishna they continued you are the supreme instructor there is no doubt about it your instructions to women to be faithful to their husbands and merciful uh to their children to take care of household affairs and to be obedient to the elder members of the family are surely just according to the tenets of shastri shastra hmm. but we know that one may perfectly observe all these instructions of shastras by keeping oneself under the protection of your lotus feet our husbands friends family members and children are all dear and pleasing to us only because of your presence for you are the super soul of all living creatures without your presence one is worthless when you leave the body the body immediately dies and according to injection of the shastras a dead body must immediately be thrown into a river or burned therefore ultimately you are the dearest dear most personality in the world by placing our faith and love in your personality we are assured of never being bereft of husband friends sons or daughters if a woman accepts you as supreme husband then she will never be bereft of her husband as in the bodily concept of life if we accept you as our ultimate husband then there's no question of being separated divorced or widowed you are the eternal husband eternal son eternal friend and eternal master and one who enters into a relationship with you is eternally happy since you are the teacher of all religious principles your lotus feet have to be worshiped first accordingly the shastra state acharya upasana the worship of your lotus feet is the first principle besides that as stated in bhagavad gita you are the only enjoyer you are the only proprietor and you are the only friend as such we have come to you leaving us at all so called friends society and love and now you have become our enjoyer let us be everlastingly enjoyed by you by be our proprietor for that is your natural claim and be our supreme friend you are naturally so let us that let us thus embrace you as a supreme beloved so in this paragraph we are hearing that gopis are saying you give so many moral instructions you give so many religious principles you are actually supreme instructor there is no doubt about it so your instructions to women are perfect as per shastras but we can also follow all the religious shastra by just worshiping your lotus feet so so by placing our faith and love in your personality we are should of never being uh, bereft of husbands sons fathers daughters like that so so they are saying that if we take shelter of you if we take shelter of your lotus feet um, then instead of bodily conception of life then we will always have the eternal relationship with you whether as a husband son father friend whatever it is we will be always in relationship with you then we don't need to have any relations like at bodily level that goes away after some time like that 
and you have become our enjoyer so actually you were the proprietor for all of us so you have you have a natural claim to be our supreme friend so let us embrace you as a supreme beloved basically they saying actually those religious principles of taking care of husband from they come secondary the main principle if you take shelter of you then that will take care of everything else like that that is what they are expressing in this paragraph so going to the next paragraph then the gopis told lotus head krishna please do not discourage our long cherished desires to have you as our husband an intelligent man who cares for his own self interest reposes all his loving spirit in you persons who are simply misled by the external energy who want to be satisfied by false concepts try to enjoy themselves apart from you the so called husband friend son daughter father and mother are all simply sources of material misery no one is made happy in this material world by a so called father mother husband son daughter and friend although the father and mother are expected to protect the children there are many children who are suffering for want of food and shelter there are many good physicians but when a patient dies no physician can re revive him there are yeah i'm underlining this one there are many means of protection there are many means of protection but when one is doomed none of the protective measures can help and without your protection the so called sources of protection simply become sources of continued distress we therefore appeal to you dear lord of all lords please do not kill our long cherished desires to have you as our supreme husband they are presenting a nice case so basically they are saying that we have long cherished desires that you want you need to become our husband like that so actually when we repose our loving spirit in you then will be satisfied in always whereas other relationships they cannot fully take care of us they cannot fully protect us this is similar in line to prahlad maharaj teachings where propas is describing here that although father and mother want to protect the children but some they cannot give food to some children they cannot give proper facilities for some children like that some parents ideally everybody wants to protect the children but they cannot do ah uh, let us say doctor actually wants to save everyone but sometimes even though they give the best medicine they give timely medicine but still patient doesn't get saved patient will may die sometimes so that means is not in their hands ultimately you are the source of full protection like that if uh, yeah that means the point here being stressed is that they are asking krishna to be their protector fully solely and fully similarly we should always recognize that every good thing that is happening in our life is because of krishna's mercy that doesn't mean let us say some devotee helped us we don't feel grateful for them we should feel grateful for them and also we should grateful become grateful for krishna because through krishna krishna empowered them krishna gave them the ability to uh, to help us in that particular situation so every time we get some uh, good thing happening in life we should appreciate uh, krishna in our life and the devotees who helped or anybody who helped also so that quality of gratefulness will help when a good thing happens and even let us say we have so, so called distress also happens then also we can learn to connect with krishna we can learn to uh, understand and seek the shelter of krishna that time more and more because the distress situations are a good opportunity for us to intensify our bhakti like that so that's the other point we can learn from here from the gopis are also saying that uh, you be our supreme husband don't uh, kill our long cherished desires like that is saying so basically other point is that uh, we can we can develop so many security mechanisms let us say i can do proper perfect investing i can make a great retirement plan 
uh, I can make uh, buy a good home, but good car, everything I can do, uh, good fitness exercise, everything I can do. But without Krishna's mercy, none of this can succeed. That doesn't mean we don't do what is in our hands. We do the best in our hands with the understanding that only by Krishna's mercy, any of these mechanisms will work like that. Otherwise, there's many places, you know, recently one bank also become gone bankrupt like that. So all money will go away unless it's FDC insured, of course. Like that, we can have the best insurance, but sometimes the insurance may not work. Some small class, small class will make it not work like that. So we have to be very careful and always depend, understand that we are dependent on Krishna's mercy ultimately. If Krishna wants to protect us, he can protect us. If Krishna wants to uh, kill anybody or uh, induce suffering for anybody, then nobody can stop it also. So that gives us as devotees the dependence on Krishna always and seeing connection with Krishna like that. I'll pause there. Any other comments or questions from today's session from anyone so far? I think we have two, two and a half pages to go. We can continue next week. So we'll pause here. Srimad Bhattam ki jai, Sri Prabhupada ki jai. Your software business to all the devotees of the Lord. Vancha kalpataru besha kupasundu bevacha paditana pavanebhyo vaishnebhyo namanamaha. Thank you so much devotees. Hare Krishna.